This video covers California 8th grade science content standard 6A, which states that students know that carbon, because of its ability to combine in many ways with itself and other elements, has a central role in the chemistry of living organisms. 6B, which states that students know that living organisms are made of molecules consisting largely of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And 6C, which states that students know that living organisms have many different kinds of molecules, including small ones such as water and salt, and very large ones such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and DNA. The learning objectives, or things you should be able to do at the end of this lesson, are as follows. You should be able to explain why carbon is able to form many compounds, describe molecular shapes of carbon compounds, and identify functional groups in organic compounds. This lesson is based on the element carbon. Carbon compounds are often called organic compounds. Organic compounds are compounds that contain the element carbon. However, it should be noted that not all compounds that contain carbon are organic. For example, we breathe out carbon dioxide, but carbon dioxide is not an organic molecule. But for the most part, if you see a molecule that contains many carbon atoms, it's generally considered to be organic. Carbon is special because it can do many things and take many forms. Uh, the pencils that you use in class, the lead that you use is actually a form of carbon that's called graphite that allows you to write and then the little carbon atoms come off the pencil as you move it across the paper. Another arrangement of carbon is that of diamonds. Diamonds are 100% carbon that are arranged in a special crystal pattern and they are the hardest substances uh, known on earth. Now carbon is unique because it can form four covalent bonds which means it can form four bonds in which it shares its electrons with other atoms. Now carbon is in group 14 or group 4a so that means it has four valence electrons. Now and because of these four valence electrons again carbon can do lots of special things. It can form short chains, long chains, branch chains, and rings. Alright so here's an example of some short chains on the left and then on the bottom you'll see some longer chains. Here's again a example of a ring that carbon can form. Alright, so if a molecule contains only carbon and only hydrogen, these are called hydrocarbons. If every single element in a molecule is either carbon or hydrogen this is what we called a hydrocarbon okay so if you are shown an element or a molecule and asked about whether or not it's a hydrocarbon or not you simply look at the molecule if you only see carbons and hydrogens then that molecule is a hydrocarbon Alright, we have a special subset of hydrocarbons which we call saturated hydrocarbons. Now in a saturated hydrocarbon, you'll notice that between the carbon atoms, there are only single covalent bonds which are represented by just one line between the carbons. So if in the entire molecule you only see single covalent bonds and there's only hydrogens in carbons then that hydrocarbon is said to be saturated. Now here are some examples of what we call unsaturated hydrocarbons. In unsaturated hydrocarbons there is at least one double or triple bond located between the carbons. So if you see a double or triple bond between the carbons and there are only carbons 
and hydrogen is present in the molecule, then you know that it is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So you just learned that a hydrocarbon is a molecule that contains only hydrogen and carbon. You also learned that a saturated hydrocarbon contains only one single covalent bond or contains only single covalent bonds between the carbon atoms and that an unsaturated hydrocarbon contains at least one double or triple bond between the carbon atoms. Okay. So here we have a hydrocarbon and we know it's a hydrocarbon because we only have carbon and hydrogen atoms present and we know that it's a saturated hydrocarbon because there are only single bonds between the carbon atoms. So now I want to talk to you about another type of hydrocarbon and it's called a substituted hydrocarbon. Alright, but before we talk about substituted hydrocarbons, the first thing we need to talk about is what we call functional groups. Okay, and a functional group is a group of atoms that replace a hydrogen in an organic molecule such as the one we have here. All right, and when you have a functional group take the place of one of these hydrogens, it's then called a substituted hydrocarbon. Sort of like you have a substitute teacher. All right, and it's coming and placing one of these hydrogens is going to be a functional group and it's going to substitute for the hydrogen. So I'm going to show you an example. The first functional group we're going to talk about is called the hydroxyl group and it contains an oxygen molecule and a hydrogen or oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom. Okay. So for example, we could take this hydrogen and if we got rid of it and substituted it for with the OH with the hydroxyl group now we have a substituted hydrocarbon so instead of it being only hydrogen and carbon we have substituted one of the hydrogens with what we call a functional group and the first functional group again we just talked about is called the hydroxyl group and it is OH all that we're going to talk about three different functional groups and you'll just need to commit them to memory you'll need to know that when you see OH that it is called the hydroxyl group. There is another group called the carboxyl group and it is it contains a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen. So again this functional group if we can substitute it into any one of for any one of these hydrogens and then this hydrocarbon will become what we call a substituted hydrocarbon. So if this hydrogen was replaced by this carboxyl group, okay, we can then call this a substituted hydrocarbon. All right, and then there is another functional group which we should concern ourselves with and that's called the amino group and it contains one nitrogen and two hydrogen atoms. So again, if we wanted to take this functional group and make our hydrocarbon a substituted hydrocarbon, then you would notice it would be take the place of one of these hydrogens and become a substituted hydrocarbon. And so now this right here is a substituted hydrocarbon because a functional group took the place of a hydrogen. All right, And again, you just need to commit to memory these three functional groups. The hydroxyl group, which is OH, the carboxyl group, which is a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen, and then the amino functional group, which is a nitrogen and two hydrogen. One of our learning objectives was that you need to be able to identify functional groups in compounds. So once you've committed the functional groups that we've talked about to memory, you should be able to more easily identify them when you see them in compounds. Here we have a methanol compound and you'll notice that here we have a oxygen covalently bonded to a hydrogen so you should be able to identify this as a hydroxyl group okay over here this might look at first glance like a hydroxyl group as well but if you look closely you'll see that there's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen on one part 
into another oxygen and hydrogen over here. So upon further inspection, you'll see that we have a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen, which you should already know is our carboxyl group. Okay, so again, this is works towards identifying our functional groups in compounds. Here I have a couple more examples. Okay, this one's color-coded, so it's easy to pick them out, but they won't always be color-coded, if ever. But again, here we have a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen bonded together, so this would be a carboxyl functional group. Over here on the left, we have an N and two hydrogens, or nitrogen and two hydrogens, so this is our amino functional group. Okay. So again, you need to be able to identify these. Here in this molecule known as serine, again, you'll see, again, we have the carboxyl group here. We have the amino group here. And if you look closely, this particular molecule also has the hydroxyl functional group as well. So this one has all three that we talked about. So you should, again, you should be able to identify the, the functional groups in compounds as part of our learning objectives for this lesson. Our last learning objective is to be able to describe molecular shapes of carbon molecules. The first shape we're going to be talking about is right here and it's called tetrahedral. The prefix tetra means four and you can see that the tetrahedral shape is similar to that of a pyramid. Not a triangle because a triangle would be two-dimensional and a tetrahedral is four or three dimensional. And so it has three sides and it also has a bottom, which is where the four part comes in. But when you see this shape, you, could, you should be aware that it is called the tetrahedral shape. The second shape we want to talk about is called planar. And it's called planar because all of the molecules or atoms are in the same plane, kind of like they're all like on a sheet of paper. And then the third molecular shape we're going to talk about as far as carbon molecules are concerned is called linear and it's simply what you might guess the molecules are all lined up in a straight line uh, generally when you see a linear molecule it contains a triple bond as you see here so now you should be able to achieve all our learning objectives you should be able to explain why carbon is able to form many compounds it is able to do so because carbon can form four covalent bonds due to the fact that it has four valence electrons. You should be able to describe the molecular shapes of carbon compounds. The first we talked about is tetrahedral, which has four sides and looks like a pyramid. We talked about planar, which has all the atoms in the same plane, like on a sheet of paper, and linear, which has all the elements in a straight line. And you should be able to identify the functional groups in organic compounds we talked about amino group, hydroxyl group, and carboxyl group.